Hello team, greetings for the day. Welcome back to the tutorial of ISTQB Foundation Examination. Today we are talking about the white box testing technique. We have covered statement coverage in the previous tutorial and hope you have been through that tutorial before you come here because that will just create a simple understanding and I'll be uh, you know skipping the common understanding of the uh, statement as well as the decision coverage which remains the same. But still let me see what I can cover the best from the common point of view which I've already covered in statement coverage. So do visit that tutorial that would help you to understand it about uh, more detail of these white box testing techniques before you come to this tutorial. Anyways let's move to the next one we are talking about still the structure based techniques or white box testing techniques and here we will be have, we have discussed already in the previous tutorial about the comparisons between the two techniques and how these techniques are being measured whereas decision testing is also called as the branch testing which is uh, important to remember because they can use any of these terms which will be uh, you know quite common for them to pick up and ask you for a question there so decision is also known as branch testing or branch coverage whereas decision testing is considered stronger than statement testing and 100% decision coverage guarantees 100% statement coverage but not vice versa. So these are some of the questions which can be asked to you theoretically compared to uh, you know analyzing the answer at K4 level. So let's look at what we have got more. So obviously understanding a flowchart we have covered that in statement testing already that how a fragment of code which is given to you as a part of the cushion should be converted to flowchart and from the flowchart you can derive the uh, you know cushions or the number of test cases and get the right answer. A flowchart basically consists of uh, branches which are basically called as decisions and nodes which are also called as statements. So we have covered the nodes parts earlier in the previous tutorial. We'll be covering the branch in the this tutorial. So we also know about the path. How do you measure the path on the flowchart? So it basically starts from the start point and reaches the end point by following the directions or the arrows or the you know decisions made during the program. Whereas uh, the same thing can be applied with the maximum coverage by using the minimum number of test cases. So let's understand what is decision coverage. Decision coverage basically uh, you know goes with uh, measuring the number of test cases required or minimum number of test cases required to have 100% decision coverage which means that all the decisions all the branches are tested or not which is also can be defined as minimum number of paths required for covering all the branches so if you have to have 100% coverage of decision here you will take one straight path like this which would cover the maximum branches here which says like one two three four sorry four and five so anyways this is not a branch as the program because this is just the start and end of it and not even this as well so we have three branches which are covered but we are remaining with the other two on the right side like this and this one so we would need one more path to have 100 percent decision coverage and that's what you mean to say minimum number of paths required for covering all the branches would give you the answer of decision coverage so Anyways, these are the two paths which we would need and decision coverage will be marked as 2 as the right answer for the 100% decision coverage. Let's look at the examples. That would help you more to understand what decision coverage is all about. Taking the similar example for the statement testing what we have covered already, like wait for the card to be inserted. There are conditional uh, statements. We have two if statements where it is nested. And when you say nested, that means the first condition which opens gets closed only after the second if gets closed. So first the internal condition will get closed and then the previous which is open will get closed. The flowchart would look something like this where 100% uh, decision coverage has to be measured. So obviously I would take one path which will go, uh, let me use a different color to re represent. No, I think that should be fine. Okay, let me take red. Yeah, so this would go like this where I'll be taking one path for having maximum branches being covered. But we see there are a lot of other branches which are not covered in one test case. So obviously another path would be like going from here and uh, reaching this way, following the directions and reaching end. But still we are left out with two more branches here 
and here. So obviously we would need another path for having the maximum or 100% decision coverage. So the answer here will be three because we need at least three paths to cover all the branches or to test all the decisions. Decisions are basically your arrows or the directions which are marked in this flowchart. But there's a simple tip, simple example or a shortcut I can give you at this point of time to minimize your efforts to minimize your efforts to draw the instead of drawing the flowchart, you can get it directly from the question itself by just applying the simple formula that is count of if plus one will give you the answer for the decision coverage. So if you just can apply it right away, you can see the number of if present in this program are two. So you have one if present here and there is a second if. So two plus one is giving you the answer for decision coverage. That's three. So a simple shortcut, but use it at your own risk. Subject to you are very much confident with the understanding of decision coverage. So let's look at the another one. The other example here is what we have with the next program which is without else statement, which is like, you know, having the branches, but not the nodes on the program. So this is the flowchart, how it looks like. But as you remember, decision coverage is all about measuring the branches. So obviously you would need one straight path here to cover these branches and one with the maximum coverage by going just out and then coming in. But we are still left out with this branch. So obviously you would need one more path to have 100% decision coverage. So still, though you see that, at this point of time, you can very well differentiate uh, between the statement coverage and decision coverage that though we have a node or we don't have a node on the else statement, decision coverage goes there. Because decision coverage is all about measuring the branches or testing the branches and decisions. But statements, it only goes limited to the statements where the nodes are present. And that's where we say decision coverage is more stronger compared to statement coverage. And that's where we also say that if 100% decision is done on a fragment of code, then 100% statement is already covered. And that's why we say it, because even if you don't have a node present here, decision goes here. So the right answer is decision coverage is 3. Let's look at another example, which is the again multiple if with single else. If you see, there's just one else. And anyways, using the formula, I can tell you right here, the answer would be four because we have three ifs in the program and number of if plus one is the answer for decision coverage. Let's look at the program where if you see this flowchart, I need one path like this, which is covering the maximum number of branches and reaching the end of the program. So that's that's here. And then we are still left out with uh, this branch. We are left out with these branches. So we need more. So all simple. We just have to take another path like this. I take on one, one more path like this, which will be going from here and then coming out, and then one from the outside for this branch. So we will need all together one, two, three, for the test cases to have 100% decision coverage and the answer is four. Let's look at another example to understand. This is unnested. Unnested means uh, obviously the, you know, the if statements are not uh, closed within the same if. Once the first if is closed, then only the second if is started and then it is closed further with else. So the program goes something like this where the number of test cases will be one, which is to cover the maximum paths, where a second one will go something like this, come out and then come out. So one only testing inside and second path testing only outside. So that's one of the simple way to follow the, uh, the best use of or best understanding of what is the decision coverage. And here, uh, sorry about that, you know, decision coverage is basically two. I'll give you the f uh, formula for that. That has to be updated. It's basically decision coverage, which will be always number of ifs here. So stay tuned for this update. I'll be just making sure that is correct. Let's look at another example where they can ask you about the decision coverage measurement instead of asking you the number of test cases. So here they will give you the test cases and then they will ask you about the 
coverage achieved by executing certain parts. So the diagram, the flowchart will be given to you in the question and then they will ask you for the given fragment of code or be given figure. Uh, these parts have been executed already. What decision coverage is achieved as of now? So if we see here, uh, let me change the color for that. Um, let's take green. Uh, we have covered ABC. So let's see uh, ABC path follows what? So it goes from here. So if you see uh, A to B, this decision has been tested and this decision has been tested. Whereas A, B, D, G, F, where it follows like this way, um, A, B, D, G, and H. So that means this decision is also tested, this one is tested, and this one is also tested. So now we are left out with three more decisions which are not tested, which is between D and F, F and G, and G and I. So let's see what is the coverage issue. How do you measure that? Decision coverage is measured as number of decisions executed divided by total number of decisions. So if we count the total number of decisions here, we have eight decisions, and out of eight, we have practiced only five. And three are still untested based on the question given to you. So five out of eight, that means you just divide five by eight, you get the answer as 62% of decision coverage has been achieved. And obviously there are more required for 100% coverage. So either that program or this one can be asked to you at any point of time to answer the question. So make sure that you have followed the tutorial and understood the decision coverage, which are very important to answer such questions. Though it looks tricky, but simple and can be easy subjective you have the understanding of the techniques or just the simple formulas which can minimize your efforts beyond this i'm always open to take queries doubts clarifications you can just put it on comments or you can follow the links in the description to reach me out so that i can answer you on one-to-one -one base as well so just stay tuned for more tutorials coming up on the techniques. We have experience based testing following this. So there are two more techniques to undergo. And finally, we'll be done with the chapter four. So all you have to do is practice the sample questions about this and feel free to get back to me for any kind of clarifications. Stay tuned for more videos, more tutorials, and do help share the videos with your friends. Thanks for watching team. Take care. This is all for now. We have more videos coming up on the upcoming tutorials and also on the upcoming chapters of this uh, tutorial. So stay tuned for more videos. Do hit the bell icon for getting notified about the latest videos. And in case you have not subscribed to the channel, please do subscribe as early as possible. Because we'll be having more videos about technologies and testing coming up back after this, right after this. So uh, stay tuned and... Uh, Till then, enjoy learning, happy learning, take care.